It is one week's salary, and, and I can get this to you because this is fine. I'm remembering from a little while back. Um, and for everything after 10 years, it's equal to two weeks of your salary. So that's the severance pay calculation that you would receive. And it's figured then in weeks, and if you go off the rolls, then your salary would start paying at that rate for however many weeks of severance pay you'd be entitled to. So is it roughly equal to what you would get on v VSIP Vera, or is it more? Well, some folks are, would be eligible for more than 25000 in a severance pay calculation. Okay. Some folks are, would receive less than 25000 due to the number of years of service that you have on. And roughly, if you've got, I think it's 20 years, 20 years of service, you've, you know, you've maxed out you know, your severance pay. Okay, so grand. you will send me that in an email and I will, I will send it to you because I'm not positive. I think it's one week for 10 years. Everything after 10, you get two weeks. Okay, I will make sure that that gets out to the staff um, as soon as possible next week so that you all, c anyone who is considering can leaving can do the, your calculations. Okay. We, there is, there's a severance pay worksheet, calculation worksheet that I can attach to it okay. that would actually show what severance pay would be received. All right. Very good. Yes, Larry. Yeah, when do you anticipate having the remapping completed? Within, uh, the question is when do we anticipate having the mapping completed? I will say within the next two to three weeks. Yes. Uh, what would happen if you get down to the 34 people but you have like 30 11s left? Then I will have to do a riff. Yes. Yeah. Let me let me tell you some. I, I want to. His question was, what happens if you get down to we've lost 34 people, but I still have too many 11s left or too many nines left? Then we will have to do a riff. The, it's not just you know all of our other VSIP Vera's have been just a shrinking of the agency. You know, and pretty much wherever anybody wanted to go we let them, and it, we just were reducing our overall number. This one is different in that we have targeted positions, we have a new org structure, so we have to reduce numbers and live within that new organizational structure. So if we end up not losing enough of the right grades and series, then we will have to do a RIF. Yes? If we would have to do a RIF, let's say you still have, uh, well, my question is, will it be, for instance, let's say you still have several 11s and several 9s in this scenario. Uh, do you go J6C wide and rift all the staff from 15 down to the lowest grade, or do you target it at the 11? Because it ties in the second part. Can a, can a veteran, uh, let's say a veteran 9 or veteran 11 bump a non -vet 12 or 13? No. The, the question is, if we had to go to RIF, do you start at the 15 level down? Or, you know, so could someone, a veteran at the GS 11 level, bump someone at the 12 level? And the answer to that is no. The RIF would be targeted to the positions that we need to reduce. And so it, um, it would be at the 11 level or lower. Because we have, as, as when I walk through the, the briefing, we have enough positions for 15s, 14s, 13s, and 12s. Okay? Yes? Susan, you mentioned that the CM functions under the new organization are not necessarily going to be the same as they are under the old organization. What will be the main discipline going forward under the new organization for CM? The question was, when I, I mentioned that CM would not be the same in the new organization as it is in the old organization, today, and what, and what will the discipline be going forward? My, the tenet that we all agreed to at the management level was that CM is everybody's job. So we don't have any positions where, any more positions where the parenthetical says configuration management or the, I don't even know if that's a true parenthetical, it is or that the person does CM only. It will be an ancillary duty 
to everybody in the organization. And there may be some people who will be doing CM as half of their job, but they're going to be doing RM or release management as half of their job, or a fourth and three-fourths or whatever. So we don't have any straight CM positions anymore. OK? Mm -hmm. For example, one of the things that CM people do is they attend CCB meetings, configuration control board meetings, and they set up the meetings and they take notes. That's one of their jobs. I don't have enough. I cannot afford that anymore. So somebody will, if, if, there's, if there's someone needed to take notes in a meeting, we'll just tap somebody to do it in the meeting. It won't be a particular person doing it every single time. Okay, that will not be a full-time position for anybody. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes. The question is, if people who are being displaced can go on, can't go on PPP until you are in a RIF situation, why didn't we just go straight to RIF? The agency doesn't like to do RIFs. I don't like to do RIFs. RIFs are very um, uh, disruptive. And I would much rather have people who are ready, willing, and able to retire go to, first you know, to do that. Um, and then if you have to get to a RIF, it is a much smaller number of people who are adversely affected. You know, there's, there's a huge difference between people saying, you know what, I think it's time for me to go. I, you know, I'm looking, at the, I'm looking at the jobs that there are that I might apply for, and I don't want to learn something new. I don't want to do that job. And so I think it's time for me to go and either retire or find other employment. That is a completely different thing from someone saying, I don't want to go and you're making me. And that's what, that's in a rift, that's where we are. And we, if we can avoid doing that, we will do everything in our power to avoid doing that. Okay? I am. His, his follow-on comment was, I thought you said that you are eliminating particular positions regardless. But what you're not, what you're not throwing into that mix is, Yes, those positions are going, but remember, there were many, many opportunities for people to be promoted before we get to that point. Okay? Yes, Clarissa. Possibly. The question, I'm sorry, the question was whether people who are in CM today will be placed in other positions, and the answer is possibly. We haven't done that mapping yet, okay? It depends on their skill set. It depends on what positions we have open. Um, that's why mapping is a, a difficult um, endeavor. Yes? The question is, what, if you are in a position today and you require a certain IA certification, right? And so you are working towards that, and you may have already received that, and then you are moved to a position that requires another certification, a different certification. The rule is, um, and I, is Jeff Roth here today? That's what I was going to say. That's right. And, and Susan's, uh, Susie's answer was, when you move into a new position, you have six months to achieve your certification. So that's the answer. The 2010 number, or 2010 date, is for all of us to get our initial certification. But 
as time goes on, we will always be hiring people and people will be retiring. And so anybody who comes into a new position right now, if I hire someone today, okay, from outside, or I promote someone today, it has nothing to do with this reorganization, and that position requires certification, that person has six months to get it, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, Dean. You had mentioned that uh, one group, the ICANN group, is going to get put back together. Yes. While the other part of that group that the application ICANN is coming from, the workflow people, have we decided where the workflow people are going? Dean's question is that right now the ICANN folks and the workflow developers are all together under CB in one of the branches, and we're taking the ICANN folks out and putting them into CI with all the other ICANN folks. The workflow developers, I'm going to um, ask Harriet if you could answer that question. I honestly can't remember. I think they're in the development groups, aren't they? I'll say it for you to repeat. Yes, they are SAP development people, so they will go to the two branches of the SAP Okay, the answer is that the people who are doing workflow today will be divided among the two development branches in CB. Yes, Mott. The people under CSRS, who the age and number of The question is, what are the age and number of years requirements for CSRS? I believe that Linda told us that a minute ago, but you can repeat it if you would. The age requirements for CSRS are 55 and 30, 60 and 20, or 62 and 5, voluntary. For VERA, it is 25 years and any age. Okay? FERS. FERS is the, the same. You have the, the optional advantage of an MRA plus 10, which is a minimum retirement age plus 10. So if you're a FERS and have had 10 years of service and meet your re minimum retirement age, which is based on your date of birth, then you could use that as well. Yes. The standard answer is 48 hours. However, because we've been experiencing not only your VERA VSIPs but a lot, we are not making that guidelines. If you indicate that you're doing it based on a window and we try and keep on top of those windows, those are prioritized in the first mode. So we try and get that back. We have no problem with you calling after it's been in there a couple of days and saying, hey, I've got this. And, and then we will take a look at it because we create a ticket when it comes in and it starts on the clock as soon as, as we receive it in the uh, covered, CSOC covered box, which is what, when you go out to our website and submit the require, retirement estimate request form, it goes, di flows directly into us electronically. So you can assume that you would get a response back within a week? Within a week, yes, ma'am. I would certainly hope that. If not, you need to call me personally. I didn't know if it might be like no, no. When you're under when you're under these circumstances, we try very, very diligently not to do that. I can't say it never happens because it does. We we all live in the in the non-perfect world, but we try our best to have them back to you, and no longer than that. I will I will repeat Jan's question. She was asking. That's okay. It's hard for me to remember to do it too. Her question was: After you submit a request for your. Um, benefits analysis from the HR folks, how long does it take to get that response back? And Linda's answer was their goal is 48 hours, but because we have lots of VSIP VERAs going on right now in the agency and with the groups they service, that it, it can take up to a week. What we will do, but I will tell you two things. Number one, we will have, Daryl, if you take this for a note, we will put out an email that tells you how to request that, and we will also, uh, I. I will also make sure that any VSIT VERA survey window that we open up gives you opportunity to request that information and get it back. You know, we've done a couple of windows that were only open for a day or two or a week um, as, you know, we moved through this fiscal year, but we, we're trying to get ahead of the curve on this one and make sure everybody has ample time to make a, um, a good decision for themselves. And, and get all the information that they need. So we will make sure that we, uh, we provide for that. 
And if you folks are going to be asking for a March of 08 date, we would go ahead, we would be willing to do the VSIP calculation for you. However, we will put a caveat statement on it that at this point we have no authorizations to offer you a VSIP, and you all understand that based on what we had said previously. We won't know that until probably October or November after the headquarters DLA solicits all of your VSIP allocations from the Department of Defense. Okay. Yes. Uh, if you apply for the VSIP bureau, and in the meantime you apply for one of the positions and you get the position, you don't have to take the VSIP bureau? You do not. The question is, if you apply for a VSIP Vera and you, in the meantime, get promoted, you get one of the positions or, you know, you, you get one of the positions that is remaining, do you have to take the VSIP Vera? The rule is, and HR correct me if I'm wrong, that even if you have signed all the paperwork and said I'm going on a VSIP Vera, you have until midnight that, the day of, the day of its effectiveness to change your mind. Now. Having said that, remember what I said earlier that I really want people, only if they're serious, to apply for VSIP Veras. I, I mean, I cannot, we just really can't have 40 people saying they're going and we start marching out, m moving folks around because we think that Sam's going to be gone or whoever. And then, at, you know, on the last day we have 40 people say, ah, change my mind, sorry, just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I understand. So I have to have all my bases covered. Understand. That's what I ask. And that, and I, I, I know, I know that's why you ask, and, and that's a valid question and a valid situation, okay? Oh, yeah, that, that, and that's a good point. Um, HR just pointed out that it's also a fairness to your other. HR just pointed out that it's also a fairness to your coworkers. You know, if you, you know, there are only so many VSIP Vera allocations available, and I have already said that if we get more people who want to leave than what I have allocations, I will go back and request more. All right, there's no guarantee I will get them, but if you have been accepted into a VSIP Vera and you know there was a cutoff, and so someone below you wasn't allowed to go, then you need to you need to keep that in, in mind also. So you need to be seriously considering, if you sign up for it, you need to be seriously considering doing it. Okay? Yes, Lisa. I noticed a message of the day that in August there are two uh, retirement seminars being held for um, FERS and then two for TSRS. Um, so are there going to be some more scheduled? Um, so in case those are full based on this new news, um, that, is there a recurring cycle for that type of uh, Yes, ma'am. The question was retirement seminars have already been scheduled. Those are scheduled through DTC. They are not run by us. What we do is we offer quarterly retirement um, overviews. If you are going within that next period, we're glad to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. We do those in 20, and they do come out in message of the day. But the retirement actual seminars are brought in by the training, and Jackie Alamo is the coordinator for that, and that is done by uh, another agency, Department of Agriculture, or whatever. But they, they do schedule them recurringly. They are in their training budget. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Daryl has some information about that. Did you say we've already requested them? So in the past, when we've done VSIT Veras, we've asked DTC to do special sessions for us. We will do that again um, in the very near future, okay? Yes. I have a question. You just stood the NOS service desk up. The majority of us are 11s. Yes. And you're saying you're only going to have 16 11s in the new organization, and there's 12 of us down there. Are you considering eliminating the shift work then? I don't. The question is that whether we were considering eliminating shift work in the NOSC because of a, excuse me, because of a lesser number of 11s in the new organization, the answer is no. Right. Did y'all hear the colonel? 
and that really that really goes for the entire organization. We are we are required to support the same mission that we supported before, which is also if, if we had gone through A76, that's the same requirement. You can't just you know not do what you had done before. You have to figure out ways to do it more efficiently and with less people. And you may be able to stop doing some things that are, quite frankly, stupid. Um, and we as managers are, are looking at those kind of things. You know, why do, we do re why do we provide this report? Or why do we pull this report every day? Well, we've always done it like that. Well, who looks at it? And you go out and you start pulling the strings, and you find out nobody looks at it. Those are the kind of things that you can eliminate doing, because they're not mission essential. But we have to we have to keep our same mission, okay? Yes. Stand up, please. Okay. What Sharon was saying is that at the NOS service desk, that was one of those one of those situations where we el eliminated more elevens in favor of lesser twelves, but we still have more twelves there than what we had before. Other questions? Greg? I'm sorry? As soon as we leave this town hall, I will do a, an email out to everyone and send the, the PowerPoint. And I'm sure that Bob is cringing because he'll want me to put on the Q drive, but I don't do the Q drive, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Her question was, she got a retirement estimate and she has some questions about it. We are more than glad to speak to you on the phone. Any specialist that answers the telephone on our team line of 0204 can pull up your specific um, estimate and answer your questions. If they cannot answer your questions, they will move it to myself uh, as the lead for your area and I will return your call. We, we do that every single day. So we, we do it telephonically just because we don't have any place for you to meet. We're a secure facility because of maintaining the OPFs. You're a secure facility, so we can't get to each other that way. We just have nowhere to go, but we're more than glad to talk to you on the phone. And we are, the, we are open. Um, I'm in at 630 every day, and we're normally uh, man the phones from 630 to 4. And there is always a specialist there to answer your questions, and we'll be glad to do so. Yes, Ferris. Um, for those positions three to three through seven, we will automatically be on the VSIP. <coughs> is that correct? The VSIP, the question is whether the positions in three through seven would automatically be on a VSIP Vera. The answer to that is that VSIP Vera survey and offers are going to be offered first to everybody. So, yes, you would be included in that. But if your question is, do you have to take a VSIP Vera, the answer is no. If you choose, and if you do not want to take a VSIP Vera, and there are not just you, but anybody in those positions, if, if those people choose not to take a VSIP Vera, and we don't have a position for them once we get through with this, you know, once we go through the whole VSIP Vera, then I will have to run a RIF. And at that point in time, the, the end result is, in essence, it's close to the same. The, the difference is, instead of an incentive, you get a severance, and instead of going voluntarily, then you, are, you, you have an opportunity to be put on the PPP where you may get a job offer, and the PPP lasts for one year? Up to one year, where you may get a job offer somewhere else within the agency. Or is it just within DLA? It's within DOD, within DOD. So, there's, there's a little difference there. One is voluntary, one is not voluntary, and there's a little bit of difference on what happens at the very end. Okay? Does that answer your question? Yes. And then the other part to that, there was only one developmental position, 7, 9, 11 growth. 
The question was, is there only one developmental 7-9-11 position? The answer is yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Teresa? It will be in, the 7-9-11 position is in CMB. I believe the title is Management Analyst. Management Analyst. Yes? When will the uh, contractors be coming down to feel like the maintenance shop before going to train to do that? Your question is, when will the contractors be coming down, down to fill the maintenance shop? Like the maintenance shop, COA, COA. The help desk, February? No, no, no. the maintenance shop. shop and a COH. I, I understand it's not just, to me, the help desk, the people who do the desk side support, you know, fixing things, the um, asset, the inventory management, all of that is all under COH, and I just lovingly call it the help desk, okay, because they help. Um, and that is February of 08. Mid-February is when I have told headquarters I have to have those contractors on staff so I can transition to them before my staff um, either leaves or moves to another position um, on, in March of 08. <coughs> yes? The uh, 14s mapped already? Is yes. That the charts that are going out? I'm sorry? You said you've got the uh, 14s already mapped? Correct. Is that going to be on the charts when they go out? Please. I've already told everybody what they are, so no, I don't intend to put that on there. I, I did not hear who was CIE. Who would be at CI? CI is uh, Dewey. It's not changing. I'm sorry. I only, I only pointed out where there were changes, so it's at, I'm sorry, That's Tracy. It's as is, where is for the other. Sue Ellen's still in charge of CO. Daryl's still in charge of CM. Dewey's in CI. The two that are moving around, Jeff is going to be the deputy, and Harriet's moving to the project management office. Jeff is already hiring behind himself for a 14, and I will be hiring for um, the CB chief, ASAP. OK? okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sharon's still in the Nemo. Sorry, sorry. That was not intentional. <laughs> Other questions? Okay, as I said before, um, I will send out the charts as soon as we get out of here. I would urge you to print them out, look at them today, Think about them over the weekend, figure out what you need to do as an individual, and then your supervisors are available beginning Monday next week to answer any specific questions that you may have. They will answer them to the best of their ability, elevate what they need to, and draw in HR um, as <coughs> necessary. 20240. Thank you. Oh. 0204. We'll put it out on an email. <laughs>